Welcome to Reggie's Corner Variety Gaming. Welcome back to this let's play of Tale of Inky Pilgrimage and Part 3. In the last part we found the village of Lindum and we will now talk to people and search for quests and loot. So if you want to see how that goes, stick around. So this is the, I think it's, welcome to the town, so yeah, it's a town, and we will now talk to everything, including this guy. Papu, strangers to the town, would you care for some information for a small donation to a homeless fellow? How much? A mere five coupons. I, Papu, would be most grateful. And as I said in previous parts, we will try to make Gargan the very best ogre he can be. Yes, most excellent. You seem like you came from the west. There's a farm out there belonging to Mr. Gorman and his wife. Very friendly folks. Yes, they are. You should try talking to them. Here beside me, there's the inn run by Dyson. You'll oftentimes get strangers passing through the town, and the townsfolk will go there in the evenings to unwind. To the north, you'll find a shrine. This town shrine is to Joran. The Enkian with you would probably make good use of that. There's also another farm further down the path there. If you head south, you'll find Left Silk's house. Such an odd name. Where do these Sheepa come up with this stuff? Isn't your name Papu? What sort of a dumb name is that? It's a very noble name, I'll have you know. Anyway. To the right, you'll find the residential area as well as our town's general store. Terras runs that. A good man. Hello again, my good friends. I don't believe that I have all of your names yet. I'm Gargan. I'm Rook. Would you be so generous to make a further donation to me? What for? I'm not made of coupons. I know, but I can offer you something of high value in return. Sell that instead. Actually, I've changed my mind. What is it? It's a very special key that will only open a very special box. If you can find this box on your travels, you'll get to see what true power is. Love? No. Well, I'm interested. How much is it? I need 500 coupons on top of what I already have. A fine. Oh, I knew that it would be too much to ask. You don't have that kind of money. Yeah, we don't, but we'll keep it in mind. And buy that key. Vivlio the Wanderer. Excuse me, but how well traveled are you? Not very. Reasonably well traveled. Interesting. I'm wondering if you can advise me on my path. I seek the knowledge of the gods. My name is Vivlio the Wanderer. I have a few points about that. First of all, that's a very broad spectrum. Secondly, how would you even go about that? A good question. You sound like a nut job. I'm out of here. But wait, before you go. What? Could you direct me to the fields of valor? Sure, just head east. Oh, really? I thank you for your guidance. I'm sure we'll meet again. Rook, are you sure about those directions? I don't even know what the fields of valor are. Of course, makes sense. You're always so helpful. I wouldn't have wanted to be that type of jerk, but Gargan does what Gargan does. Anna, the forests here are so magical. Did you know that the fruit bugs here aren't edible until after they die? Their shells are hard until after that, when they soften a bit. Cool. Natalie, it's not always easy running around adventuring in a dress. It's even worse when slimy globs brush against your legs. I can see that being a problem. Hello? Matt, I've heard rumors about a few demon lords in Cathrol. I can't wait to slice them up and sell the parts. 
I bet I'll fetch me a lot of money. Yeah, I thought an English accent would work with that pirate-y looking hat. Lance. I want to go to Ridness, where the rest of the Incians live. They're the only people that have any knowledge of mechanics. This place is too primitive for my liking. Rude. Lisa. Hello, my dears. Are you all new in town? Yes, I want a drink. Manners? That's alright, sir. Please be seated and I'll bring something to you. You look a bit troubled. Is something the matter? No, nothing at all. I have to get back to work. Huh? Hello, how can I serve you? Yes, I want a drink. About before... Yes. Has somebody been hassling you? No, it's nothing like that. Tell us and maybe we can help. Okay, fine. I've been taking care of my sick mother for the past few years, but the cost of medicine was costly. Over time, it all built up quite badly. That's rough. Yeah. She took an even worse turn a couple of weeks ago and passed away, I'm afraid. I'm very sorry for your loss. Yeah, sorry to hear it. Thank you. I take it your earning as a waitress makes it hard to pay off the debts? Yeah, it does. Would you accept some money? No. No, I couldn't possibly. Please forget I said anything. But we... No, I don't want Sherry. Appreciate the offer, but oh, <coughs> but no, thank you. Hello, my dears. Welcome to Lindum Inn. May I assist you? Yeah. Would you like a drink? We have everything from culture wine to cloud reach stout. Okay, so we emptied out the dialogue tree. Anything to loot? No. Okay, we try. We 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 try. And that's long. Rook, I have a pretty proposal for you. Dyson, what's that now? Lisa could do with a race. You have some guts, don't you? Look. I would love to help the girl, but it's out of the budget right now. I've been as generous as I can be. We have money. Here's 100 coupons. Would that help cover the cost of a race for a while? No, that won't be necessary. I'll cover it for a while. Why are you doing this? It would have made my parents proud. Well, I'll say to her now. I'll be sure to keep it anonymous. She doesn't like being seen as a shared case. Any chance of a free room stay? No, but I have this old shell that you can have. Received plum bug shell. <laughs> Which is? Yeah, I'll just shake a couple. Well, I think we shaked all of them now. Any new dialogue? Dyson offered me a race. I appreciate your concern earlier, but it's taken care of now. Thank you. And we have the achievement unlocked. Struggling onwards. Brilliant. Anyway. We're in somewhat good shape, but we might as well pay for a room. Visitors to our town, keep out of trouble and you're very welcome. Talk. Welcome to Lindum, friends. My inn is so clean that you think I <laughs> wiped it with the pelt of a sheep. My spear will pierce the heart of those who murder innocent sheep. Ha ha ha! Just a joke, my friend. Yeah, uh, he does really have a sense of humor. How much? The peasant's room is a low quality and will heal 4 hit points. The standard room will heal 8. And the noble is super good. But we are... In no need of a great room. So we can just get out of here. It was just uh, an empty house. Fruit 
Bugs the mystery. Where do fruit bugs come from? You would presume they'd be native to our great continent of Eperos, right? It appears not. They're theorized to originate from a mysterious land called Fruit Vale. It's an island far out in the ocean that has only been reached by portal, and some say is in another plane of existence entirely. What are they? Fruit bugs are insects that make their homes inside fruits. Yes? No! The fruits are actually shells, similar to turtles. The shells grow on them. They don't make their homes there if they find them. The different types of fruit bugs have shells of different fruits, which can be surprisingly flexible and durable. The shells stretch easily when pulled, but don't bend easily when pushed. So you can actually take the shell from a dead bug and place it over the shell of another bug. Don't try and eat the shell because it's hard as a rock until a few weeks after the death of the original bug. What types of fruit bugs are there? The common ones found throughout Eperos are the apple bug, pear bug, plum bug, orange bug, banana bug, and kiwi bug. There are others that are rarer to find like the peach bug, watermelon bug, and grapefruit bug. The king of the fruit bugs is said to be the pineapple bug of which there are only a few of in existence and which rarely appears outside of fruit veil, if at all. Does that provide you with greater insight? You still have lingering questions like what does a fruit bug look like outside of its shell? These will be answered in time. Well, good, good. Phylos, why are you in my house? I wanted to come in. Mm, that's not what I call a good reason. If you don't leave soon, I'll have to remove you. <clears throat> uh, settle down there. We're, we're not here to cause trouble. Actually, I have an idea. I can make use of your intruding skills. What's your offer? I'm in love. Good for you. Her name is Ilanada. She lives on the east side of the town, and I want to ask her to dinner. But I don't know the first thing about her. I want to find a way to appeal to her. I need you to go find out what she likes. Just ask her to be your mate. Not that hard. You have to be assertive or fight your love rivals. Everybody knows this. And uh, that's not really the ink young way. And this underhanded nonsense is? Uh, fair enough. We'll do it anyway for some sort of reward. I have a very nice magical cloak. Uh, is that satisfactory? Yes, let's go. <laughs> and that's all the reason that we need. Okay, so now we actually do have this Love Professions Quest Progress. Phylos in Lindum needs help finding out what Ilinada likes. Love struck Phylos is smitten with a girl named Ilinada. He seems like a bright enough fellow, but he wants to find out what she likes so he can really impress her. Should we really intervene here? Yes, we should, because we can get sweet loot, and that's all the reason we need. Don't mind if I do. Potion of extra stamina. Oh, so he had a lot of good stuff there, um, but we couldn't get to it. Oh well, we got something, and that's a win for us. Okay, so we... we you know what? Let's... I mean, we still have... Retired life. And we have the fishing rods. So I think we'll do that. And then... We'll head back... And do the love. The sweet love quest. Okay, here we are. Old man with the fishing problem. Okay. Mugwort. Ah, what? Oh, it's you a lot again. I'm busy fishing. Yes, we're aware. If you would indulge us for a moment, then you may find that we're more useful than you give us credit for. Fine, fine. What is it? We have a fishing rod for you if you're interested. You, you do? Hmm, let me see that. Yes, yes, sturdy, but flexible pole, strong string. Yes. What do you think then? It's a good quality rod. How much are you selling it for? Well, we're just going to give it to you. You you were? I never even thought much of your kind, Indian, but that's mighty decent of you. 
You're welcome. I can't let you go away empty-handed. This may be of use to you on your travels. Received belt of the beast hunter level one. This old belt of mine is enchanted, says you'll be more vicious when going for beasts like wild boars or the wolves that roam nearby. Works for me, I want that one. And we got achievement unlocked, retired life. Great, and that should mean that it's no longer in our journal. It's not. It should also mean that we now have some sassy new equipment. Unfortunately, I think it's in one of these. Deals an extra three points of damage to beasts. This is probably a, a good setup. Um, yeah, yeah, this is good. This, this works. This works. Okay, let's get back to it. Yeah, so, about that offer. Hello again, my good friends. I don't believe that I have all of your names yet. Now this is the same. Fine. Gargan, my friend. You're a most generous soul to help out this Vulpa. Yeah, yeah, now give me the key. Here you go, it's yours now. Receive Devon Musa's key. I hope that was wise. It, I must be off. I have an important purchase to make. Thank you, friends. You've turned my life around. And he is gone. Hopefully, that was worth all our money, basically. Anyway, off to the east. Store, Lindum Lions. All your general goods for all your general needs. You probably won't have... Hello there. Terrace, welcome to my humble shop. How may I be of service? First talk. In stock, plenty of good gear and plenty of healing items too. Please take a browse if you're in need. And he, whoa, he has quite a few things. Ooh, toughened axe. A tough axe that deals improved damage. Toughened Staff, Toughened Mace, and Toughened Spear. Okay, he has good stuff. Uh, we'll come back, my friend. We'll come back with money. Okay, moving on. Don't mind if I do. Zoe Leaf. We have one of those already. But we'll take, we'll take care of them. A Fool's Guide, Emperor Tyon Megalos. Emperor Tyne Megalos ascended to the throne of Ridnas at the age of 26 after his father's death. He's the first emperor in his family line to not have served as a priest, but rather as a magician. This was controversial amongst the population, but he spent two years in seclusion at a temple of Jorin to study the teachings. This helped his popularity somewhat, although it was a slow climb over the following years. At the age of 57, he led the battle to retake Guardian from the Ogres and successfully drove their main force from Kulshar. This feat ended their rule in Kulshar that lasted almost a century and solidified Tyon's reputation as a great emperor. Two years later, he was able to sign a peace treaty with the Ogres of Krothmol, the first of its kind, which allowed for trade links to be set up between the Ancients and Ogres. Tyon has been married to three different wives, Rella, Cassandra, and Penelope. Rella bore one of his children, Cassandra bore four, and his current wife Penelope bore two. Rella was originally one of his warriors, and she died in battle. Cassandra was Rella's sister and died in childbirth. Penelope was one of his negotiators that he appointed after she showed excellent promise in her academic years. They married when he was 55 and she was 27, something that caused a lot of rumor mongering amongst the people. Good gossip. And it's like, are you the one? Ilanada, how are you doing? Good. Listen, we have some questions for you. Uh, okay, what's this concerning? It's important stuff. First of all, what's your favorite food? Uh, steak. Interesting choice. What's your favorite activity? 
I like to hunt. My father used to take me into the woods to spear boars. Good choice. I don't bother hunting much myself. When I do, I like it. That's because you're lazy. Shut up. Last question now. Ogres or logre? Ogres have always been very nice to me when I've seen them in the forest. They don't really come into town much. Phylus has picked a fine mate. If you had nice fangs and blue fur, you'd be good for me. What? what? Uh, nothing. Farewell. <laughs> so that probably gave us an update. Yeah. Ilanada told us she likes steak, hunting, and ogres over loker. Will that be enough? Tune in next time on Lava's Quest. No. And we're back. Phylos, well, what did you find out? She likes steak, hunting, and ogres over lokers. Now give me the cloak. That, that's it? That's not good enough. What exactly are you looking for us to find out then? Yeah, I asked the most important questions already. So, something with more substance. Give me details. This cloak had better be worth it. It certainly is true. Okay, so that didn't really give us any new stuff, so we'll have to go back and talk to her again. Ah, wrong house. Anyway, Papu, I bought this house. I'm no longer homeless. I owe it all to you, my friends. I'll name this house after you. Gargan Place. How's that? My next goal is to get some better clothes and some furniture. I'll be trying to find a stable job first, make myself more valuable than just a simple, um... That gave me an idea. I'll be a tour guide. Okay, cool, he tries. He did have a key, though. Okay. We're back. Hi again. Hey there, Rook. Take over. What sort of dates do you like? Uh, I'm sorry? If a man were to ask you out, what would your ideal first date be? Um, well, I like going out and exploring the fields and the plains. Uh, a picnic would be nice. Perhaps to sit down by the river, under a nice tree and just talk. Perfect. Well, thank you for your time. I'm confused. Yeah, she's, she's probably right to be. Ilanada told us she likes to explore and have picnics by the river. We got some solid evidence. Hello. Did you get anything better this time? Her ideal first date would be going for a trip out into the fields and plains. Then, to have a picnic by the river under a nice tree. There you would just talk to her. That's good. Very good. I could bring steak. Now, about that cloak. No, 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 we aren't done yet. I want that cloak now, Phylos. You'll get it, you'll get it. Settle down, you don't need to get all bent out of shape. I'll bend you out of shape if you keep giving us the runaround. I need to find out if she's even interested in settling down. We'll go ask her, but then you're handing over that cloak. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> Phylos wanted more information once again. Well, he is a bit needy, but that might be a mighty fine cloak. Hi there! I'm starting to get uneasy about all this. Look, I'll just be blunt. There's a man in town that wants to date you. He wants to settle down with a nice woman and he thinks that's you. Are you interested? Phylos? Yeah, how do you know? Lindum isn't that big, really. Fair point. Tell him I'm interested. Good. Now he'd better fork over that cloak. We'll have to fight me for eternity in the battlegrounds. If you just said that in the first place, I have told you. Yeah, well, it wouldn't have been the same. Ilanada told us she's interested in files. And that's kind of what we needed to hear. And we're back. Well, what did she say? I hope you were subtle about it. Ah, she knows you're behind this and she's interested in a date. I'd cut the underhandedness out though. Ah, you revealed that and I should have just been blunt from the start? 
apparently so. Told you, I knew, I know women. Ah, you barely know ogre women. You're 15. In 18 years, I'm already into adulthood. Oh, you've helped considerably. Here's the cloak that I promised. Received cloak of avoidance. This is it. It'll blend in nicely with my fur, but that doesn't mean much. What does it do? Try it and you'll see. And we have the achievement unlocked love profession. Well, how's that cloak treating you? It should help you avoid enemy attacks. You know, I'll I'll let him wear it. It's 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 a good good switch, I think. Let's real quick check the rest of the houses. Gargan, just an empty barrel. 20 coupons? He shouldn't leave this line around. He shouldn't have. Because we just stole it. And we're not proud, but we do what we do. Oh, and a potion of stamina. He has a lot of stuff. But it's locked. Okay. Hello, good sir. Left silk. Shh. Don't tell anybody, but I'm actually a merchant. My items have been obtained legally, but I don't want Terras to know I'm stepping on his territory. Okay, that's cool. What do you have? You have... Regen. Yeah, he seems to have um, a few good items, but we don't have the coupons, so we'll return once we do. Or I... Yeah. We'll probably return once we do. So we have one more house. That doesn't look good. Help in exchange for a red potion is a fair deal. And we got another red potion. Way, oh God, it's one of these. The fruit bearers. Way back in, in the before era, there were a number of mystical beings known as the Orchids. These beings were widely varied in their powers and abilities. Some weak and some strong. The Orchids strongly opposed Nightmare, one of the less pleasant of the divine beings. Nightmare was responsible for the beginnings of the undead of Enki, and the Orchids chose to band together and kill him on Enki, the only place where he supposedly can be defeated. The Orchids were led by Ban, the one who could live for millennia without aging. Ban gathered all of the Orchids together and summoned forth Nightmare from his dimension. Nightmare appeared instantly and with a smile on his face having been preparing a nasty surprise to play. The battle raged on for days before any side showed signs of tiredness. The many orchids fighting against Nightmare alone. As a deity, Nightmare could change size and form at will, but the orchids had plenty of powers to counterattack. Some were matches of the elements, some could fly, some had immense physical strength, and others had different abilities altogether. Nightmare was growing bored of the fighting, as it was becoming clear to him that the orchids were finally starting to tire. The orchids were strong, but they don't have the stamina of a god. Nightmare decided enough was enough and froze all of the surviving orchids in place. He even brought the dead back to life. They were all brought together in their hundreds, and he told them that he had a special surprise for them. Nightmare said that he wouldn't kill them, for that was too easy. He was going to condemn them to eternal life. He scattered them all across Enki to continents near and far. Each orchid was in a hard to reach location and where they landed a tree grew. Each tree bore fruit and if the fruit was consumed, the devourer would be cursed. A fraction of the power of the orchid that became the tree would be granted to them, but at the cost of physically resembling the original orchid. Over time, most of the trees have been lost to time, others are now heavily guarded, and others still are within reach. But they all linger on, each orchid fully aware of what goes on around them, but unable to move or communicate in any way. All the orchids are now All the orchids are now our fruit bearers. Oh, that sound a bit weird. Hello. Hilbert! Help me! Ah, what is this abomination? Hold on, 
As tempting as he's brought my blame on this creature, I think we should assess. Not a chance. Look at this thing. We have to cut it down. No! I think this is a person. A gore magician would be a good help here. We need to find a magician. Did we? We didn't get a quest, did we? Nope, we did not. So, that was the end of part 3 of this Let's Play. We uh, found some quests, we solved some quests, we bought an expensive key, and we got some achievements. So, a good little session, and in the next part, we'll continue with everything. I hope you had as good of a time as I had, and I will see you again when I see you again. Bye for now. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it or the channel at large, please feel free to click those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you.